If you're gonna ask me what's my favorite part in woodworking, definitely sanding. No, seriously. No, seriously, no. <laughs> It's a very tedious job. You have to sand to different grades of sandpaper just to attain the smoothness that you desire. It's so tiring and it's so time consuming. Good thing there are power tools out there that can help us in sanding. Enter the electric sanders. Hi, I'm Sol, the creator behind Coffee Break PH, a channel dedicated to DIY and technology and totally not coffee related at all. <sighs> Electric sanders have different variations or types. In this video, we are going to talk about three of the most common handheld electric sanders out there in the market and we will discuss when to use them. Okay, let's start off with probably the cheapest of the three, the palm sander. The MPS 3300 is a 280 watt palm sander capable of doing 14,500 RPM. This type of sander moves in one directional circular motion. This sander is small enough that it can fit your palm. Hence the name, Palm Sander. Okay. <laughs> it uses clips to hold down the sandpaper. The clips are located on the sides. At the rear, you'll see the dust port. The dust bag is easy to remove and install. And it's easy to remove the wood dust that it accumulated. You just have to slide the bag going up to remove it. There you go. And because of its square shaped base, uh, this sander is very ideal in sanding corners. This type of sander is also called the one fourth sheet sander or the quarter sander because of the sanding sheet that it uses. Okay, so just cut this into four. And this is the one you're going to load in your palm sander. So if you are on a budget, you might want to consider this type of sander because it's not that pricey. Plus, the cost of the sanding sheet is very reasonable and they are available in all hardware stores out there. With this type of sander, you will be able to remove materials and smoothen your workpiece with the proper grits of sandpapers. That's why almost all who started in woodworking started with this type of sander because of its price, functionality, and consumables. <sighs> Next on the list is the finishing sander. The MPS 3200 is a 200 watt finishing sander capable of doing 11,000 RPM. Like the PAM sander, this sander moves in one directional circular motion but with bigger base and slower speed. So when you're almost done with your project and will do one last sanding, this sander is suited for the job. Since it only has 11,000 RPM, the sanding speed is not that aggressive and is very helpful in that last batch of sanding. Attach your higher grease of sandpaper and this sander will complete the job. This sander has two big quick replacement clips that makes changing sanding paper easily and securely. Unlike the previous model, the dust bag of this sander has a zipper. So to unload the accumulated dust, no need to remove the entire dust bag instead just unzip it. The combination of a larger base plate and a thicker soft pad help in delivering smoother finish. If you'll compare with the PAM sander, you'll see how thicker the pad is. For its consumables, it needs one third of a sanding sheet. Like the PAM sander, this sander is not that pricey and the sanding sheet it needs is very common and very budget friendly. Last on our list is an orbital sander. This MOS3501 is a 350 watt orbital sander capable of doing 8000 to 13500 RPM. Meaning, this sander has a variable speed functionality ranging from 1 to 6. 
Setting 1 is good for polishing. Settings 2 and 3 are good for finished sanding, while the rest of the settings are good for regular sanding. Unlike the two previous sanders, this sander has circular pad that moves in one directional circular motion. This type of sander doesn't use the common sanding sheet. Instead, it uses sanding discs. Sanding discs are a bit pricey and may not be available in the usual hardware stores, but these sanding discs last longer than the usual sanding sheets. Plus, it's easy to install and remove them because of the hook and loop system. <laughs> At the rear is the dust bag. To remove the dust that accumulated, just pull the entire dust bag out and then unload it. The orbital sander almost covers all bases, meaning if you need to remove some materials, just put a lower grit sandpaper like 80 grit and this sander will be able to knock down those high spots that your workpiece has. You can also use this orbital sander for regular sanding. Just set the speed to probably 4 or 5, then attach your desired rate of sanding disc. In my case, I usually use 120 to 220. For finishing, just change the settings to 2 or 3, then attach your desired finishing grit. In my case, I usually end up with 320. Now this sander is a bit pricier than the other models, but for my personal opinion, the functionalities and the benefits outweigh the costs. A word of caution, no matter what sanders you are using, always wear your PPEs. Okay, so that scratches the surface of sanding. Get it? <laughs> okay, how about you? What's your favorite sander and what's your sanding technique? Leave a comment down below. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.